As you know, there are ample opportunities for Trump to make flubs uh, as much as he tries to point out what Biden does. Trump is taking this more seriously than people allow publicly, yeah. right? I mean, in public, his aides often downplay the prep that he does. Right. He's been doing not standard debate prep. Uh, he, he doesn't have stand-ins as of now uh, for Biden in these debates. So he's right? not doing mock debates. He's not it, doing mock debates. No, that could, that could certainly change. But he's been doing what they've been describing as policy time, where they bring in different people to brief him. A bunch of senators have come, on, come in. Last week, Senator Marco Rubio and Senator Eric Schmidt both briefed him at the RNC headquarters after his meetings uh, with lawmakers around Capitol Hill, which was his first major meeting with party members since he became the presumptive nominee. And they are focusing on various issues that could come up, abortion, health care, um, energy, uh, COVID, and then very specifically, and this was one thing that came up last Thursday, what Trump will say when asked January 6th related questions, particularly his statements about pardoning some of the people uh, who were arrested in connection with the violence that day. The Michael Popak, Legal AF. Donald Trump and Joe Biden are going to be duking it out in a debate. It's coming up in about a week. And Donald Trump has already recognized that he lost the last debate to Donald Trump because he did not exercise any self-restraint was not prepared properly and decided instead to be a bully and try to interrupt Donald uh, Joe Biden, sorry about that, over a hundred times, much to the frustration of Chris Wallace, who at the time was moderating it. Maggie Haberman, who basically is on the Trump beat for the New York Times, reported in a recent interview that she has found through her reporting that Donald Trump is trying at least to take the upcoming debate seriously. He's doing something he doesn't usually do or never liked to do, whether whether he was candidate Trump or President Trump, which is to prepare and read. Yes, there is a presidential candidate that people are thinking about pulling the trigger for who doesn't like to prepare or read. Those are just the qualities you're looking for in the leader of the free world. I mean, it's no it's no um, it's no uh, a joke that uh, and it's been reported in the past that Donald Trump did not regularly read his daily presidential briefing book, his daily presidential briefing. In fact, they stopped giving it to him because he became bored. He didn't want to listen to it. And, and uh, you know, there's no amount of presidential documents that he either didn't ignore, rip up, try to burn or steal and take with him to Mar-a-Lago. Now he's apparently putting in some minimal effort. I mean, this is a person who got basically a gentleman's C uh, in every you know uh, ed educational setting he's ever been in, including the University of Pennsylvania, which he brags about. I mean, gentleman C is putting it mildly. This is not somebody that was a scholar. You know, Joe Biden takes a lot of grief for no reason. <clears throat> he he's a, he's been a copious note taker. There's just volumes and volumes of notes that he takes at the intersection of history and politics so that he can um, keep them for posterity and to refer to them in, in the past, you know, for, for his future decision making. Uh, Donald Trump, not at all. So the reporting from Maggie Haberman is he is practicing, whatever that means. They're getting him for limited prep and briefing time and debate prep. They're bringing in Republican operatives to play Joe Biden. And they're trying to catch Donald Trump up about key issues that they think will come up, like a woman's right to choose and the assault on her liberty, equality, and reproductive rights at the hands of Donald Trump and the right-wing MAGA Supreme Court. He's going to take a lot of flack and a lot of understandable heat and incoming assault from Joe Biden. As Joe Biden tries in the debate, in his closing argument to the American people, that he should be re-elected, he's going to tie and yoke and lash Donald Trump to his convictions, his fraud into business conduct, his sexual abuse and uh, and, and misconduct against women, um, all the lawsuits that have gone against him, all the juries that have found against him, all the grand juries that have found against him, all the indictments, all the prosecutions, all the convictions. That is Joe Biden's homework. Joe Biden's homework is to close the gap and just lash Donald Trump to all of his failings, criminality, immorality, and the like. And don't leave any stone unturned. By the time that debate is over, Joe Biden 
will have mentioned, he should be mentioning, the convictions of Donald Trump, the fraud that was determined by a, uh, by a jury, in uh, by a Judge uh, Angoron in New York, the jury verdicts, two of them, E. Jean Carroll, the hundreds of millions of dollars that he owes for fraud, for punitive damages, for defamation, for misconduct, sexual misconduct, and rape. And Joe Biden has to drop his gloves. I've talked about this in prior hot takes. This is the time to make the closing argument. There may be other debates, but statistics show that the first debate is the one that matters. It's the one that leaves the, the most lasting impression and imprint on voters and their decision making. Now is the time. Nobody can leave the debate with Joe Biden believing that Donald Trump is anything but somebody whose business record is a sham. It's propped up like a like a Potemkin village or a house of cards on a, a fraud company. He could never have made the money that he made after he inherited his money from his father unless he committed fraud. That sexual misconduct related to E. Jean Carroll and all the other women who testified in front of the jury compellingly about them being abused by Donald Trump. That has to resonate. The abortion decision, Dobbs from two years ago, and what's happened since with more than 13 states ripping away a woman's right to choose. That has to be uh, uh, front and center in the debate. Summer is jam-packed and the heat, no joke. You gotta prioritize hydration. We're made from 60 to 70% water. So when we're dehydrated, we feel imbalanced. You know the signs? Fogginess and fatigue. With all the drinks out there, you want hydration that works. Liquid IV delivers extraordinary hydration with advanced science thanks to live hydroscience, an optimized ratio of electrolytes, vitamins, and nutrients. One stick of Liquid IV delivers superior hydration to water alone with three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink plus eight vitamins and nutrients. It's hydration for endurance, mental clarity, and overall well-being. Sugar-free white peach for me, the perfect poolside companion. Liquid IV is a must-have for my bag of summer necessities. It is the number one powdered hydration brand in America. Tear, pour, live more. One stick plus 16 ounces of water hydrates better than water alone. Eight vitamins and nutrients. It's non-GMO and free from gluten, dairy, and soy. And there's no artificial colors or sweeteners. There's four delicious sugar-free flavors. White peach, green grape, raspberry melon and lemon lime. It's a zero sugar hydration solution with no artificial sweeteners. Clinically tested to hydrate more than water alone. Turn your ordinary water into extraordinary hydration with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use code LEGALAF at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop better hydration using promo code LEGALAF at liquidiv.com. And Donald Trump's going to have to be made to answer for what has happened to women in America who have been reduced to second-class citizens with limited civil rights and no reproductive rights and no rights of bodily autonomy because of Donald Trump and who he placed those three Supreme Court justices on the Supreme Court. And once they got the numbers, that out-of-step right-wing court trying to shove it down everybody's throats, their church, religion, right-wing based agenda and political and judicial activism that has to be the focus of this debate and donald trump he can prep all he wants about his failed immigration policy that led to the border crisis uh his failed women's rights policies his failed voting rights policies and then he's going to have to answer for jan 6 in a way that he's never have Donald Trump sits, sits silently at hearings and arraignments and oral arguments for the Supreme Court. He never speaks. He lets his 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 uh, cheap suited lawyers do the talking, you know, in in circular, unhinged legal reasoning that sometimes resonates with certain judges, but usually does not. But now in a debate, he's going to have to answer for Jan 6, his role in trying to overturn the will of the people his role as the ringleader 
as the hub of the conspiracy and all of the steps that it took from, from stop the steal, denying legit, le, the legitimacy of the election even before it began, denying the legitimacy of mail-in ballots and absentee ballots, denying the legitimacy of votes made by armed forces, denying the count, denying everything, even though he lost 70 lawsuits, every state and federal judge has found that he was wrong. His legal theory was wrong. His own his own lawyers, who are now either disbarred, discredited, or felons, or indicted, were wrong. And he worked um, through a group of sycophants and people in the Department of Justice like Jeff Clark and others who have now been indicted or about to be uh, in order to try to steal the election from Joe Biden and pressure campaign on Mike Pence. All of that work on Jan 6 and their insurrection and the attack on the Capitol and the battle for the soul of democracy that happened on Jan 6 has to be front and center in this debate. I don't care how many hours it is. That's Joe Biden's task, but it's also Donald Trump's task to try to answer for all of these things. I mean, in normal circumstances, it would be an impossible task and it is an impossible task. Can you imagine any prior presidential candidate having to answer for any one of the things that I've just outlined on this hot take. Any one of them would tank his career. In the not too distant past, we've had presidential candidates who have admitted to either getting uh, mental health help um, or have, or that, they're, they're, that, that uh, they cry. And that was a deal killer for the American people. We don't want a crier. We don't want somebody that addresses his mental health, right? George Bush looked at his watch while he was debating Clinton, and that killed him. <laughs> okay, Walter Mondale, uh, you know, had a, a terrible debate performance on one slip of the tongue, right? Uh, Gerald Ford mistook what was going on with the Iron Curtain and who was the enemy, and that killed his career. What I just laid out in this hot take in the last eight minutes, any one of these things would make, would be a disqualifier for Donald Trump collectively together we have to fight through trump fatigue we have to put this closing argument to the american people in an efficient elegant way that joe biden will do and no amount of prep or preparation by donald trump is going to help i don't care how much he reviews his debate prep material his binders how many people they trot in to act like joe biden you know, he is going to be underwater quickly because there is no compelling argument about the Dobbs decision taking away a woman's right to choose, what he's done about voting rights, the fraud that he's perpetrated on the American people and in his business life, and on Jan 6, and against women, and sexual misconduct against women. Even, even um, Mitt Romney has said that he drew the line when the person got a judge to be a sexual abuser, and he won't vote for the guy. Hasn't stopped others uh, who 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 see their own political fortunes tied to Donald Trump. That's what the debate's all about. And that's why I thought the reporting by Maggie Haberman has been so has been so important. Um, and the fact that he's admitted, Donald Trump's admitted that he uh, interrupted uh, Biden too many times and it was a bad look. It was known as a political uh, uh, the equivalent of a food fight. <laughs> the worst presidential debate in living memory. Donald Trump can't afford another one of those. Although it will naturally happen because of the topics, as long as Joe Biden honestly keeps on track and attacks and goes into attack mode. I know it's unsavory, right? You want to be the president. You want to be uh, above the fray. This is the fray. The vote is the fray. The election and the soul of America is the fray. You can't be above it. You got to be in it. As we've said before on Midas Touch and on Legal AF, this is a competitive sport. This is a contact sport. And we've got to win it. And it's led by Joe Biden at the top. So um, we will see uh, on next week's debate. It's going to be on CNN. It's anchored by, by Jake Tapper and Dana Bash. Dana Bash, and I'm sure they're doing a great job in getting prepared. We'll continue to follow it. We'll have clips, we'll do a live report of the debate, we'll do a live stream of the debate and with commentary here on the Midas Touch Network and on Legal AF. And then you can follow us on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We have a show, a full-length podcast called Legal AF. And I 
co-anchor in on Wednesdays with Karen Freeman, Nick Niffalo, Saturdays with Ben Mycellus, and then hot takes like this one at the intersection of law and politics. Lawyers talking about things they know what they're talking about. How refreshing right here on the Midas Touch Network. If you like what I'm doing, thumbs up, leave a comment. I don't know why I winked. Uh, <laughs> it'll help with the ratings, help with the algorithmic gods. It'll keep us on the air. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Hear ye, hear ye. Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. Exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee. Join us at patreon.com slash legal AF. That's patreon.com slash legal AF.